Hi, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'll be interviewing an amazing personality. He's a chartered accountant with 13 years experience in the accounting profession. He has worked in various industries such, such as FMCG, oil and gas, banking, and other service industries. He's also married with three boys, a Christian, and he fellowships with the Evangelical Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Shalom Parish in Dansuman. Hi, everyone. Help me welcome Mr. Kenneth Okai Yao Afejo. Kenneth, Thank you. please meet Hi. my audience. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Yeah. Hi, Ken. Thank you so Hi. much for doing this interview with us. So on this channel, we have, there's this little ritual that we do before we start the interview. Yeah, okay. Before we started the channel, we sent out surveys to our target audience and some of them were of the view that they couldn't trust information on the internet. So before we start, uh, can you raise up your hand and take this pledge? I do. <laughs> I promise to say the whole truth. I promise to say the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me, God. So help me, God. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. So my audience, I know you joined to watch Kenneth do his thing. And as I said, he has 13 years of uh, work experience in the accounting profession. So I'll start by asking Ken. Please, can you tell us a brief description of who you are and how your childhood was. Thank you very much, Papa. And uh, it's a pleasure to be on this platform. Uh, to start with, I am privileged to belong to a family of uh, three boys uh, whose, dad, or whose dad was a custom officer. My dad was a custom officer and that resulted in we doing a lot of travels within uh, Ghana. I remember Growing up, um, I started my education, if my memory serves me right, somewhere in my hometown. I know that was for a short stint, uh, where in my school, I remember I had to be made to write in the sun, on the uh, ground, in the room. By then, the, the floor was not uh, cemented, so I had to write with my finger. Even though my dad had bought me a writing slate mm -hmm. at the time, I had to we made to write in the sun with my finger because it was thought that I wasn't uh, uh, fluent or experienced enough to be writing on the board. Can you imagine a board that my dad bought for me? You know, <laughs> that ordeal. So that I remember vividly, but I moved forward from that. And by the grace of God, we landed up somewhere in Cape Coast and I joined the Golden Jubilee Preparatory School where I started my basic school to uh, end of, I think, class two or so, when we were again transferred from there to Kumase. And in Kumase, growing up as a child, we lived in the Bokum Estate, where I schooled at the Prince of Peace International School. I know that school still exists now in Kumase anyway. So I moved on from there, and then we ended up somewhere again in the Volta region, another school. And then on, we went to, uh, I think, Koma we went back to the Brongahafu region and then thereabout, but I didn't go to the Brongahafu region with my dad. We eventually had to settle in Dansuman, Nakra, where I was privileged to join that is complex school, the Dansuman branch. I joined from class six till I completed uh, my JSS at the time from that is so basically that's how my my childhood uh, day started and where it got me to uh, in that is complex going down so man can you that's amazing um looks like you've been you've traveled throughout the country i'm sure you know every region in ghana now yes except for the west upper west and upper east yeah I have been through all the others except those two. Okay. So when 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 are you when are you closing that? 
What are you uh, going there just to, uh, just to cancel everything uh, for your bucket list? <laughs> yeah, you know, God's 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 time and plans are the best. So we still hope and look up to God in this in the opportune time He will send us there. You know, we may plan, I want to be here today, but if it's not a plan of God, trust me, you will continue rescheduling and it will never happen. So when the right time comes in God's own time, I'll be there, I'll visit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, first of all, can you take us to your career path? And has this always been what you have wanted to do since you were a kid? Uh, thanks. Um, so I continued from Dantman Datsus to Pando Secondary School, where it all started. I remember I had a dream of becoming a, a journalist for whatever that meant, only God <laughs> knew. You know, I had I was passionate about it because I felt I didn't like maths at the time. So for me, general arts was the easier way out. And once general arts, what came to my, my mind readily was uh, to be a journalist. But, you know, God had other plans. If you read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the Bible says, I know the plans I have towards you, plans of good and plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. So apparently God had a brighter future for me, but I was erroneously looking other way. The Bible says there is a way that seemed right to man, but the end thereof leads to destruction. So I got aggregate seven at the time. And... Um, I had Pando secondary school. And so when my dad went to check on my results with the school, they said, uh, well, yes, I chose general arts, but they felt that I get seven at the time was fit to do business accounting. You know, I remember when my dad returned to Accra to break the news to me, I wept like a, a child. I wept because I felt something good and great had been taken from me. You know, a dream I had so much as to where that was going to end me. You know, I didn't know, but I sincerely wanted to read in arts because of the phobia for mathematics, which at the time, you know, I erroneously thought accounting was all about maths. You know, I later got to know that it had nothing to do about mathematics at all. So I went through, but because I had that, bad perception about the program I was reading. I never committed my heart to it, my time to it. So I remember in Kwanda Secondary School from first term, first year, second year, I was worn down. No, my 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 spirit was not there, especially not about the school, but about the program I was reading at the time. I wanted to be in general acting here. I was in accounting. So you know what one thing I noticed along the line, I was performing well initially, but because I had this, I had tune of my mind, people who I was beating in class initially all started passing me in my exams to the point where um, I remember our guidance and counseling master had to write to my dad, you know, to inform him he should move me out of the school or probably get a program change for me. So it moved on until we went through Form 3, and then we eventually came out of SS. I mean, fast forward, got so good. Um, some of the results were good, some were not so good. But within the space while I was waiting for our results to even come, I got the opportunity to um, enroll in the African College of Management and Computer Science in Kumasi, where I started... Um, my Institute of Commercial Management, ICM UK program. So I remember in my first class, the first day in the class, I sat and I prayed to God. I said, Father, this is my life. I want to do this. I pray that you carry me along. And I tell you that first week, going through the lectures in the class, I was taking through accounting topics uh, I actually did accounting and, and finance, you know, for the ICM program, certificate diploma and advanced diploma. My first lecture, my first week of lectures in the accounting class was something different. It was as though I had known everything long ago, you know, because at that point I tuned up my mind and look, this is what I wanted to do. So I was the one who was answering every question in class. 
-hmm. It ended up that weeks later and months later, I was the one teaching my colleagues. Even when the lecture would not come, I was the one teaching them accounting. Before exam revision, all that, it was all about Ken everywhere, Ken accounting, Ken management, mm -hmm. Ken economics, Ken everything, you know, because at that point I had told God that take over, take over and take over, you know, let me put that erroneous impression about accounting aside. And there was nothing but matters in there. It was just a plus and the minus and understanding the principle it all had. So that is how it started. And then from ICM, I went further to apply for a degree program because I, at the time it was all about degree, 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 you know, every season and what comes up. If you don't have it, you, you don't belong to the field. So I had to read my degree program. And so I applied to Legon, I applied to Cape Coast, UCC, but I was given psychology and what I view. And then I wanted uh, admin in Legon, I didn't get. So I decided I will not go to um, UCC. You know, so I told my dad, God bless him so much. I was fortunate to have had a dad who cared so much about our education. So he enrolled me in Central University and then uh, before if Central University, I started the Institute of Commercial Management Program, ICA, where I started in May 20, 2005, actually. And then I, I, I started so well because at the time I was an accounting guy who had come to the class. I remember my first level, I wrote four papers. I passed business accounting, business management, and uh i think uh business uh, i think law yeah there was business law and then i passed all but the economics so i had to rewrite economics again fast forward i went to the second part and then i enrolled at central university at the same time where i decided to you know divert a bit and do banking and finance so i did a bsc banking and finance in central university alongside my ca program so i remember very well shuttling between the mataiko campus of central university in kanishi and then after closing i was for the morning school so i closed around 11 12 and then i jumped to the ca library at that time uh around the opera square you know behind uh, the former ama head office so that's how it all went up until I finished the Central University and I eventually passed and qualified as a chartered accountant, qualified as an accountant in November 2000. And I graduated in Central in October 2009 and then I qualified as an accountant with Institute of Chartered Accountant in November 2009. It was a blessed year wow. in fact, for, for me, you know. So I, it was the same time I started my national service. And uh, I was lucky to have had the control and accountant general department in, in Ho. Yeah, so it progressed. And then after my national service, you know, I didn't want to work in the government sector. So again, I prayed to God. I said, Father, direct my path. This is my desire that I have put before, before you. Bible says in Psalm, I think Psalm 3, verse 5 or 5, 3, it said, delight uh, yourself in the Lord and you shall grant thee the desires of your heart. So I said, Lord, I am delighting in you. Direct my path, my career path, you know. So I was home from that. Um, I did a service from November 2009. So within the period when I was graduating, things were happening for me very fast, you know, in the national service cycles as well. Because of my banking program, transferred to the Vosta region, they didn't know where to post me. So uh, but for God's own ways and plans for my life, which was affirmed in Jeremiah 29, 11, I would have ended up somewhere, you know, teaching around the current uh, OC region. You know, that's where they wanted to post me to. But I was lucky I got a church member who connected me to controller and accountant general, the whole regional treasury office. So I was there for one year. I finished in 20. 10, October, and then I moved back to Accra somewhere in December, and then I started uh, looking for a job. I was home for, I think, four months later, and in April, I had a call from um, the bulk of the bulk of storage and transportation company, which is BOST, 
you know so that's where i started fully as an employee uh, as an account officer supervisor uh, it was a contract appointment so i was there for about uh, seven to seven months plus and got so good i got uh, to join Accra Brewery at uh, another contract staff but that didn't stay for long i was privileged to have been confirmed i think about just about, about after four months you know so I held various positions in Accra Brewery as assistant group financial reporting manager. And then at one time, assistant um, financial manager. And then eventually I became the financial accountant for Accra Brewery and Vaulty Ghana Limited at the time where they were sister company. So I was in Accra Brewery for almost six years where I progressed to the ranks to become a manager. And then somewhere in 2018, I bowed out of Accra Brewery. And then I joined Baltic Ghana Limited in the capacity of a governance risk and compliance manager because I felt there's been a bit of um, accounting, uh, too much of accounting in me. So I decided to move into corporate governance and then have a bit of internal controls, you know, and all that. So I had that and at, in, in Vaulty Ghana Limited, I spearheaded the control environment improvement. I made presentations in board meetings. I was responsible for the board and audit deck, and audit committee meetings. I made presentations and all that. So basically that's how um, it, it, it all went through until eventually I ended up this uh, year, 2022, June, with the Aguila Holdings uh, Group. So that's where, and that's how my career path has, has been, you know. God, God, God has been faithful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's really interesting, right? Um, I just wanted you to, because in your conversation, you were saying yeah. accountants not all about math. Right. Can you just give yeah. my audience just a brief description on what accounting is from your point of view? Okay. So accounting, basically, it's uh, the act of recording, okay, uh, recording historical information uh, and summarizing them, okay, and getting reports out of it to make meaning to uh, the user groups ensure that the numbers a business turns out are accurate they are timely and they are useful for the various user groups such as uh, management shareholders the government uh, our bankers our external auditors who use the information even our customers and our, our suppliers so basically accounting in this sense is understanding the principles behind it so you and I know that there is this concept that we call it a golden rule in uh, accounting, which says you well, are debit the receiver and credit the giver. It is simple. Bible even says it is more blessed to give than to receive. So it's the same thing. So you give out, you record it. You receive, you record it. You understand. So the two arms must always balance out at every point in time. Basically, that is what accountant um six to a uh, buttress and then in accounting mainly there are three things we we look out three okay basically one you want to look at the financial position of a business which you are running and that is recorded in the profit or loss account then two you want to know how uh, liquid the business is i.e uh whether you have enough to be able to pay your debts when they fall due, and then whether you are cash sufficient, you know, uh, how, whether you are sufficient to, uh, as a business, to be able to run your day-to-day -day affairs. And then the third one is to see whether the business has enough blood within it. So by the blood, we have what we call the cash flow statement. So how your cash is moving in and out of the business. You know, it's like blood running within a human body. So basically, that is what accounting is uh, in, 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 in putting it simply, you know. So it's, it's not all about math. It's just understanding the principles I've given you. I have to record it here. I've taken out, okay, I need to uh, uh, write it here. That is 
what it's all about. It doesn't have an algebra. It doesn't have a, a what calculus. It doesn't have quadratic equation and what have you. No, none of none of that. Yeah. So accounting it is that simple. Yeah. My next question would be: If someone wanted to do accounting, what should the person yeah. do, or what? How how should the person start, or where should the person start from? Yeah, so the accounting profession, uh, luckily anyone can do it. You know, unlike the sciences where you'd have to go through, have some foundation before you could be a medical doctor after some number of years. The accounting profession is the other way around. So you could be an agri student, you could be a science student, a psychology student, and what have you, an engineer, and you could still do accounting. So regardless of what program you do in school, we have... Um, a professional body that organizes uh, an accounting examination. That is the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. We have the uh, Association of uh, Chartered Certified Accountants, ACCA. And then we have a Chartered Institute of Marketing, okay, which is the same, the same, uh, uh, Chartered Institute of Management Accounting. We have the SIMA, you know. So we have all these bodies and quite a few. We have the Chartered Institute of Taxation as well, you know. So it all encapsulates around the accounting profession. So once you're able to get any of those first degree programs, be it like gray, be it psychology, be it science, all you need to do is to get yourself enrolled in um, any institution providing institution which is dotted all over Accra and then you can always do some online you know prepare yourself understand the principles in accounting understand the the, the laws surrounding some you know we have what we call the accounting standard which is regulated worldwide so you need to understand some of those concepts and then principles and um uh report the standards you know and then you are you are good to go so you sit for these professional exams so you can have your tuition somewhere and then register with a professional body and sit for the examination so once you are able to go to pass the examination you know it's 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 it formally we used to say see it was quite difficult i remember when i was joining i told myself the same thing but again I affirm to myself that, look, I wasn't the first person to be doing this and I'm not going to be the last. So, and of course, this is the career I wanted to take. So I, I spoke to myself with God being my helper that, look, take this up and you can do it. So anyone can do it. It is difficult. It may look difficult, seem difficult from the onset, but as you start and then you progress along the line, you'll be able to make it. But let me sound one word of caution here that it needs time. You must make time for it. I remember starting my accounting profession at the Center for Business Studies in Mokola behind the Adjustment the Law School. I was a full-time student, let me say so, because I wasn't working at the time. And then I would go for class and you could see old men and women come for class, you know, and they'll be dozing off. I mean, at that time, I felt some way, you know, mm -hmm. I felt they were just not trying to hold themselves up. But growing up and getting into their shoes and working now, I now understand what they were really going through. So you must make time for it. And once you do that, you will pass the exams and you join the fold of chartered accountants at some point in time. And in CA, we say that it, it, it is good when you fail a paper in CA because by so you have a story to tell. If you do not fail a paper in CA, your story will probably not be complete. So, you know, so if you take 100 students of CA, it, you could just have about, just about 10 of them who, who went through without failing a paper, you know. Everyone has a filler story to tell, and they are really interesting stories. So basically, that is what one needs to do to be um, a professional accountant. You know, we have a lot of accountants within. Somebody can just go to the university, have a degree in accounting, fine. At this or a workplace, they will call the person accountant, accountant. But just as we have lawyers, engineers, and all that, you need to go through the professional body to be a chartered accountant, and that you can now bear the title CA, you know, affixed to your, your name. Uh -huh. So that is it. You need to go to the Institute of Chartered Accountants or any of the other 
uh, accountancy related professional bodies to uh, or uh, ACCA to be called a chartered accountant. Yeah. Okay. Can you give us three skills that you believe an um, accountant or an individual needs to build for them to be able to thrive in the prof in the accounting field? So, what I always say that first for me on the list is you must be a team player. Mind you, you work with information, bits and pieces of information that comes to that comes eventually ends up at your desk, which you need to summarize and then report to the various stakeholders. So you must be a team player, team playing skills. You must have that. You must have an eye for details. And then uh, you must be somebody who listens well because you can't be given a figure. Somebody can mention a figure to you of 1,000 and if you don't hear it well, it could sound as a 10,000 in your ES, by So do when you end up adding another zero to uh, three zeros, you know, which may cost you your profession. So you must have that skills. And then the, 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 the world big accountant in today's world, accountant in today's world must at least possess uh, Excel skills, you know, because that is what is driving everything now. So, you must possess, if for nothing, intermediate, intermediate Excel, Microsoft Excel skills to be able to uh, go through. And then you must have your integrity, okay? You must possess some level of integrity because, mind you, you work with figures and all that. So you don't need to cook things. So you must be a team player. You must be uh, somebody who can think because there are times where you have to make some best judgment it's part of the accounting standard where you use best judgment okay to make certain decisions which you think would be in the best interest of the business so you must possess all those skills and then as an accountant who presents financials to stakeholders you must possess some level of um, appreciable level of good communication both oral and written communication skills yeah. okay thanks so much ken we are about to finish the interview. I just wanted you to, for people who have watched up to this point on the channel, is there any advice you would like to give to them that would help them in their profession or their dreams to be an, a chartered accountant in the future? Uh, yes, to be um, a good chartered accountant, for that matter, in the future, I did indicate that, first of all, you must be somebody clothed with a lot of integrity. So if something happens at your workplace, mind you, you'll be dealing with figures, you'll be dealing with money and all that. You'll be dealing with uh, suppliers, paying them, and all other service providers, you know. So you must have integrity where you you not be tempted you know, you must have integrity and self-control. If you read Galatians chapter 5, Bible tells us about the fruit of the Spirit from 19 to verse 22. It tells us about the fruit of the Spirit, one of which is self-control. So as an accountant, you must have integrity, you must be able to control your, your actions, okay, have self-control. So if this there is a money there which you feel, okay, I can use for my personal stuff, and maybe bring back or pay back at some other time, mindful of that, because you may never know when a surprise or date will be conducted and then you'll be found wanting if you don't pay such money or end up having um, uh, shoddy deals with, um, with suppliers and customers and then all that just to have some money coming to you. So you need to be mindful of that. And then above all, growing up and being a student, you must have at the back of your mind that, there is nothing impossible. The Bible says with God, all things are possible. So there is nothing impossible. Everything is possible with you and with God being your helper. So don't be like me, who from the onset was um, torn between two things, you know. Just, just, just have that positive mindset, okay, that I will do this. And once you speak to yourself, you declare you know, scripture said it shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So once you decree to yourself that I want to do this, I want to be the best accountant this country has ever produced, or I want to be among the best accountants if they are mentioned, 
okay? You must ensure that you have a positive mindset. You learn and make time for the accounting profession. And as you grow within the career ladder, ladder, make sure you take advice. You don't know it or no one is a repository of knowledge. That is how come most of the time you need to judge your. There are instances where some items, some things come up in the office where we need to treat. Regardless of the level I've got into, I involve my team. I'm like, guys, how do we do this? I think that this and this is this, this is how we have to do it. But probably somebody will come up, one of the team members will come up with some other alternative idea which would supersede your. So that would near to the benefit of all of you and at the end of the day, ensure that you produce the best results. So you must ensure that you carry other people along and try to groom people as well. Don't conceal information to yourself as professional accountant because tomorrow I'll not be there. Someone else will be there and the person must be able to pick up from where I left off. So it's always good to share information as an accountant. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching okay. to, to this point. Um, as you know, if you don't want to miss out on, on new interviews coming up, subscribe to my channel comments if we if there are other questions that you wanted can to answer that we didn't ask on the session and click the notification icon so that you don't miss out on the new interviews that we'll be having with other amazing personalities so ken thank you so much for joining us to having a chat with us today and we are very grateful for the uh, nuggets wisdom nuggets that you shared with us I know all of us are excited that Ken came and then he gave us um, some description or points on how to be a chartered accountant. Ken, please, if we want to reach out to you, I, is there any way we can reach out to you? Is there any platform you'd want us to reach out to you for people who have further questions around being a chartered accountant? Thank you very much, Fafa. Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn at um on Kenneth Apejo. That's my LinkedIn account. You can always connect to me. And on Instagram, I'm on okay underscore Apejo. And then <laughs> on Twitter at Ken Okay too on uh, Instagram. And then as usual, my email is Ken Apejo at gmail.com. So you can always reach me if you have any question, any clarification or anything around the professional area in FMCG, a bit of banking, oil and gas, a bit of that, and then currently the service and language business uh, industries. I'll be glad to assist you. Thank you, Fafa, for mm -hmm. the time. I'm grateful. Okay. Thank you so much. So I'll be putting Ken's details in the description, the video description for this video. And uh, I'm grateful to everyone for watching the, the interview to this far. Just a quick reminder, subscribe, hit the notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of our interesting interviews. And also, if you have further questions and you are too shy to reach out to Kenneth on the mediums he has provided, you can put your comments in the comment section on this video and I'll try and answer those questions for you okay see you next week and ken thank you so much for coming on thank the channel <laughs> a pleasure okay. All the best. <laughs> yes. okay bye bye